Okay, cool. So yes, today I'm going to be doing a and a for the Asperger's in Society documentary. Um, so if there's anything that you want to ask, you are very welcome to um, put it down in the comments. Um, I am also on YouTube as well, so if there's any comments over on, on YouTube, then um, please let me know if there's anything that you want me to talk about. I do have some questions already drafted up um, from people from the questions uh, section of the um, Instagram. Uh, so yeah, um, for anybody who isn't, isn't already aware, the Asperger's in Society documentary is a um, a documentary that I made by myself. It's the first documentary that I've ever made and I started off the documentary with literally about zero video editing skills. I, sp I suppose like the, the, the majority of the editing skills were on like iMovie so it's not really that great. Um, I had very minimal equipment and this this whole sort of process was me me trying to, to contact different people and get in contact with them um, shoot a few videos around Manchester in my own time and before the documentary I, I wrote a, a literature review which was like um, just going into the aspects of autism and, and the co-occurring conditions of like mental health and stuff and it was it was very very interesting to go through that because I, I realised that mental health was um, something that, that is quite common but I didn't realise quite to the extent that it was and so I, that, that sort of spurred me on even more to try and make the documentary as good as possible and <clears throat> I'd say that it, it, it was a very difficult process it took me around 300 over 300 hours um, to plan it and this this is excluding the literature review. Um, get all the sort of the consent forms and video release forms and all that. Um, shoot the videos, plan the interviews, edit it all. Um, I finished the project in my final year, but it wasn't quite to the the um, the, the the level that I wanted it to be. And when COVID sort of came along and the isolation came along. Then I started and sort of used the documentary as a bit of an anchor in the, in that in that time. And <clears throat> I over the over the three weeks that I was editing it, um I had to change a lot of things basically. I had to apply some of the knowledge that I have now um to what it is now, um to the documentary process. So it's, it's, it's a very difficult sort of journey that I went on, obviously, because I'd never done anything like that before. It it was quite hard. There was a lot lot of blood, sweat and tears going into it, definitely. And, and there, was, there was a lot of occasions where I was so engrossed in, in fixing like a tiny issue um, and having having to like redo things over and over again um, to get it to the standard that I wanted it to be. But I'm I'm very happy with how it's turned out so far. It's the the people that I had on were were amazing, and I think I did a good job of sort of delivering the interviews in stages, um, more more appropriate stages, I suppose. And yeah, it's it's I'm I'm quite pleased with it. I haven't actually. What well, I think one of the questions that that someone's asked me is, um, how did I feel? when I watched it back and the funny thing is is that I haven't watched it since it's gone live on YouTube um, I sort of paused it during the premiere because I, I decided to sort of um, get, get out get out of the house and, and try and chill out because it was the, the nerves were building up um, as I was getting into um, the premiere it was <laughs> So I paused the premiere and I, I sort of interacted with people and stuff, but I haven't watched it since because I can, I can literally recite the entirety of it for you if, if you wanted me to. 
Um, that's how much I've, I've gone over it and tried to tweak it. Um, so if there, are, if there are any questions, as I said, please put them down in the comments. It can be anything to do with the documentary process or the, the, you know, like the meaning behind it or pretty much anything that you want to ask about it. I'm very open to answering any questions on this little Q&A live stream. Um, but until we get one of those, I will go through some of the previous um, questions. <clears throat> so there's this one here. When you felt drained and exhausted, what did you do? And how did you keep yourself motivated? That is a, is a very difficult one. I think I'm, I've always got the motivation to do projects and to, to make videos and to put things out. Um, but I, I did on many occasions get so um, into the, the editing process that um, I'd forget to like eat and I'd sort of work on into the night and, and stress myself out and have a difficult time sleeping. Um, but I think as the editing process went on and I got past sort of a few of the big stages, that's when um, I started to sort of schedule in times in my in my diary in order to um, finish the editing. It was it was very difficult. I think my my girlfriends and my family and my friends were have always been a very big um, source of comfort during those times. I I usually put quite a lot of pressure on myself in in every aspect of my life, so it's sometimes quite difficult to cope with that. What is the background meaning behind the documentary? This is this I think this is an important one to cover. The meaning behind it the re the reason that I made the documentary is because of those mental health statistics and the way that I wanted to go with it was was to give people a more personal understanding of autism and how other people um view it and, and the type of things that go on in daily life um, for autistic people at all stages so just in a general sort of taekwondo club environment to um, school to adulthood um, and that that sort of awareness is, is, a, is a very core sort of integral part of it it's, it's not one of those documentaries where it's just personal and, and emotional and, and story driven um, and it's also not one of those factual um, videos and, and films and um, that's all about these are the traits and this is what you should know about autism. It's not like that. It's a combination of the two and it was a difficult job to try and combine the two but I, I think I managed to do it. Um, I wanted uh, originally to, to call it the mental health crisis. Um, in the title, Asperger's and Society Mental Health Crisis, because the really the intention of it is to um, shine a light on the the mental health stats for autistic people. You know, with the, the severe co-occurring conditions, um, the fact it being you know quite a big sort of um, social social model of disability kind of thing, and then I guess. I'm hoping that this documentary will, will open avenues for, for me and, and other people within the community to go and talk on actual mainstream platforms to get these messages out. And I think being able to, to get into that mainstream arena is very important for influencing uh, policies. There are a few policies that I, I, I want to sort of push some, some actual actionable things that I want society to um, action, I guess. First being mental health specialists for autistic people, aut autism specialism in the, in the mental health and counselling and, and all of that kind of stuff. I think that's a very important thing because we don't have a lot of that stuff and we know that traditional mental health work for autistic people is not as effective as it should be. Second thing would be education at a young age. It doesn't have to be like a whole course on autism but 
if we can get children to, to understand what autism is at a younger age and sort of have that exposure to it and I guess sort of empower autistic kids to, to tell people that they're autistic then maybe it will become less of a less less of a difference and more, more of something that's common to life I guess and then lastly it would be to do with workplaces and we know that, that workplaces aren't suitable for autistic people in many situations there's a lot of difficulty with being autistic in, in, in terms of it's quite similar to, to the struggles that you have at school and that's um, it's hard to, to, to cope with that and we need some, some way of educating people about what autism is and why we need to change stuff so that's that's sort of the meaning behind it that's the the, the background sort of processes to why I decided to part of the documentary and why I put so much effort into it <clears throat> so I've got the uh, the next one which is how did you know when you finished the documentary how do you know when to finish I think <clears throat> I never really knew when I was finished, to be honest. The The problem was that the the quality of the, the audio and the video in some of the the scenes was not up to up to scratch. It wasn't it wasn't good enough. And I had to learn lots and, and basically just just try and tweak it around as much as I can by listening to other con content producers on YouTube and things like Skillshare and stuff like that. But I never really knew when I was finished and even when I put out the documentary, I still felt like there was something that I had to do. Um, and I guess there, there is a couple of, there's like two spelling mistakes in, in some of the slides um, that I've been made aware of, but I decided, you know, I've put so much into it that it doesn't really matter those little quotation marks, I suppose. Um, so yeah, no idea, no idea when when I knew when I was finished with it. It was it was very difficult to to get that straight in my head. Um, all right, so we've got a, another question over on over on here. If you had endless finance time, resources, what would you have done differently? I think that's a good question. Well, I think I wouldn't have, have had to put so much time into editing if, if I did have that um, endless finance. Um, it, it's, it, it was a big limiting factor and I did have to put a bit of, probably about 100 quid of my own money into making it. Um, there wasn't really that much support in, in terms of monetary support from a uni and I think I, I would have liked to have like a bit more lighting and, and just uh, just stuff that makes it a little bit a um, little bit more nice and, and, and clean and, and high quality it is really that the, the thing that you've seen is is really the the height the height of of the of the content that I put out, even with the sort of background noise in some of the interviews and some of the choppy audio that choppy audio and that stuff is processed quite a lot um to make it make sure that it's all right and I think finance is definitely the biggest thing it would have been nice to have, to have like a co producer or something but i I think it's nice that it is something that i've I've done. So we've got a question over here on Instagram. Um, Ian Lowe has said, "Hey, how you doing, Ian? Um, Ewan, sorry, Ewan." <laughs> um, but we've got we've got a question here as well from W Sky Seven Eight Three. Hi, Tom. Where can we find the documentary? You can find the documentary over on YouTube on my Asperger's Growth channel. It is, at the moment, completely unmonetized and ad-free, so it's very clean, easy watching. Um, 
but if you if you want to sort of see some of like the blog posts and the behind the scenes content and the stuff that I've been doing around the around the documentary then you can find that on my website which is aspergesinsociety.com um but yeah yeah that's that's where you can find it if if you didn't already know um we've got got a question here what personal barriers did you have to overcome during the production of the documentary i think for for someone who struggles with with mental health to to the extent that i do um there's a lot of personal barriers to overcome there's a lot of things that you've got to you've got you've got to tell yourself that it's it is good and you've got to reassure yourself and as, sometimes taking a break from the editing is something that i needed and it's something that i guess i've i've learned and instilled more in myself since the sort of editing process of the documentary usually with youtube videos i'd just be going through and i'd be shooting it editing it uploading it uh, but I guess with with the documentary you can't really do that. It's it's more of a slow, crawling process, um, and there's a lot of personal barriers. I didn't have much experience, as I've said. I had to learn all of it myself from scratch. Um, I had to deal to deal with some um, difficulties in terms of um, promoting it. Um, the University of Manchester said that they would put a lot of effort into trying to promote it for me, but um, the PR campaign, campaign, PR campaign that they did didn't really do much. Um, but I guess that gave me more time to make a website and put the behind the scenes content out and stuff. Um, <clears throat> what were your desired outcomes for the documentary? Well. As as I said, I want people to to watch it. I want people to be aware of autism. I want autism to cre creep into the mainstream media and and make a bit more of a big impact on people, um, rather than just be a standalone project that that is searched primarily by autistic people. Um, it's it's nice to have that as well because I think it it's. Because I included so many personal accounts of of autistic people, it's it's obviously very in the, in the best interest of autistic people. So it's nice in that sense. Um, but in terms of actually making a, a vast difference in in the world, um, yeah, to, it's it's got to be got to be a mainstream thing. Um, how did you learn all the skills required to make a documentary? YouTube, Skillshare. Any 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 videos online? Just those those videos that you can search for. It's it's I I never did like a course or um, a degree or um, anything that that I had to pay for. It was all freely available information on the internet that I'd searched for. And every time I hit a barrier and I didn't know what to do and I wanted to make it better, I searched around that and I. I taught myself and I implemented that into the documentary. Um, but yeah, yeah, the skills were hard to learn, and then that 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 drew out the uh, length of the project quite a lot, quite a lot. I think I'll, if I was to do it again, if I was to make another documentary again, then you know it would be a lot more fluid and it would, it'd flow a bit more, and I'd be able to get it out quicker. Be a lot less stressful as well, definitely. <clears throat> um, so this is one. This is the one that has been asked by I think three or four people, and it's uh, what is your next project going to be? Um, I think for the for the time being, I'm gonna take a little bit of step back from those massive projects because obviously the the documentary took so much time to to produce. Um, I had to I had to take a step back from my, my other sort of media responsibilities. So um I stopped doing as many YouTube videos. Um 
I tried to keep up the 40 OT podcast as much as I could, um, but maybe skip missed out on a few of the deadlines that I'd that I'd usually set sort of bi weekly. Um, but yeah, that that seems to be. Um, next project. I want to make something that's more in depth into the autistic community. I want to actually like go around um, autistic advocates and, and the influencers and produce a documentary around that. So I feel like one of one of the, the difficulties of the autistic community on Facebook and um, in those groups and the ones on sort of the arena of, of people on Instagram is that is most most people on there are most followers would be primarily autistic people or or people who are parents of autistic people um, and it's not really information that's not already readily available and, and not understood and, and, and relatable um, to some extent f from autistic people um, but this stuff doesn't get out it doesn't doesn't escape it doesn't um, I mean obviously obviously there are some some great work that the autistic advocates are doing and um, I'm definitely not taking away anything away from that like I'm, I'm doing the same um, but it's very hard to get that information out and these these experiences to outside sources and different people um, Oh, here's, here's one that, that's quite similar to the last question. Have you ever considered doing a documentary featuring neurotypical people discussing their views um, of autistic people? Um, sort of like a open educational session, obviously in the positive sense, but something which highlights myths. Yeah, well, I think Obviously, obviously, the documentary that I did was partially neurotypical people. Um, apart from Peter Bainbridge and sort of the main storyline, um, I think the difficulty of producing something about autistic people, just talking to neurotypical people, is that it's not going to feel very good for autistic people to watch it because. That there's got there's always needs to be some aspect of the personal views of autistic people or else it's not fully representative of of autism um maybe it'd be nice to to sort of put together something that's to do with like for example uh, parents and maybe maybe have make them have conversations with autistic adults or um relationships that could be another sort of a topic that we could cover um, but all, all of those things are sort of on the back burner and it's, it, it is something that I'm thinking of doing and I would like to produce projects like this in the future. Um, it just depends where I can get funding and, and the support and the, the equipment that's needed to do that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, so I've pretty much gone through all of the questions that I have received. There are some questions that people have sent me, but uh, they haven't particularly. Um, I tried to go go through them and and tried to find the other questions, but I couldn't find them. I couldn't find them anywhere, and it just just seems that Instagram has just deleted all of them. And um, so so if you are watching and you do want to ask another question, um, please feel free to. Um, we do we do have some some personal questions that are not related to uh, the Asperger's in Society documentary, um, but I'm 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 not sure whether that would be appropriate for this live stream. Is there any any other questions that anybody wants to ask about Asperger's in Society? Please let me know. Please send it over. I'll have a drink of water. Good old age too well. Hashtag hydrate the Aspies. We do need some hydration. Always get one one thing that's funny about doing a podcast is that I've realised just how um, hydrated most unhydrated most autistic people are.
<laughs> There's so much lip smacking in the um, uh, the the podcast that I do. It's just, it's quite funny because I, I I do it as well. It's not just other people. It's um, so that's where the, that's where the hy- hydrated aspects comes in. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, hashtag hydrate the aspies. That's the that's the new hashtag new meme. <laughs> Definitely. Are there any questions anyone wants to ask? Uh, or else I will just keep rambling on about the documentary until it's finished. Uh, let's um, let's think. Of, I'll think of some some ones I can say. Um, I think I think if I remember correctly, the um, the actual the actual interviews that I I did, um, the one the ones that really sort of stood out to me were obviously I was I was quite surprised. Um, with Rick Rick Simpson, my my taekwondo instructor, with his um, sort of ab- ability to to do his very nuanced co- sort of views and experiences with autistic people, um, with Michelle, she uh, obviously she, she's my mom and she, she's amazing and uh, she's I I never really heard her talk about autism um, to sort of an audience and. She she speaks really well, and I was so surprised at just how amazing she was at speaking, um, and she she produced some some very important sort of points, and um, I actually uh, sort of had to sort of readjust um, some of my um, motives for the documentary just just to include those bits because I thought they were so impactful, and then I guess that uh, Peter Bainbridge obviously gave a lot of lot of different strong opinions and that was really great to hear from him um he was he was a great a, a brilliant guy to, to talk to about these things and he's obviously had a lot of experience and it was also just to see how the difference between the views and, and personalities and, and experiences of, of just five autistic people like it, it was crazy um <laughs> It is very different, and the 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 sort of levels of different traits and stuff just all seem to be on on a different level to each other. It was it was it was quite eye opening just to just to watch that. Um, but I was I was given a lot of help to find these these autistic people from uh, Norman Darwin, I think, from the Access Summit, and he he did a lot of work to sort of uh, pull pull people together and and. Uh, you know, encourage them to do to do the documentary and to speak. Um, so I'm really grateful for him. Um, we've got some questions over on Instagram. <clears throat> Are there things people can do in the workplace to make it easy for us bees? Yes, be nice people. <laughs> be nice people. Listen, and be kind, and and don't be too quick to judge. There's the, 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 it's all very basic stuff, like basic human qualities of of just being kind and friendly towards people, um, and I think that's very overlooked. Like beyond all the traits and stuff, like you don't really need to know about autism to be good to an autistic person, to be a good friend or to be a good colleague. It's not really a difficult task. But I suppose people need a reason to do those things, I guess, in a lot of scenarios. So training for managers, very important, give them some of some guidance on introducing autistic people and, and putting in place different things to help with um, the difficulties that they have. And also to try and maximise the, the, the actual productivity of them. Um, and then I guess the awareness in the in the workplace would be something important to to work on. Just in terms of just being a bit, a little bit more kind and aware. Yeah, definitely. Hashtag be kind. <laughs> um, we got another question uh, from W Sky, who's giving me a lot of nice little questions. 
Um, do you think it was easier or harder for you as an as aspiring to make a documentary because our space can be more focused? Um, yeah, I, I think, I think the, co the concentration definitely comes in there. It's... It's um. It's easy for me to get carried away. I'm not. I'm not the type of person to go. With with some faced by a big obstacle to to sort of, go. Oh, I don't care and, and pass it to the side and and not do it. I'm I'm very much an anxious worker, as in. Um. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um. I'm very much an anxious worker. So. I, I will, if I have something in my head that I need to do that day and I haven't done it, I will continue working on it until it's finished. And it doesn't matter if it's like 1am in the morning or anything like that, I'll get it done. But I suppose that has some impact on my mental health and my you know, ability to work, which I guess could be a negative as well. Um, I, think, I think most of it is just... just my motivation to do it and the the documentary is is part of my mission to try and raise awareness of autism and to educate society on how to better include autistic people and with with me having such severe mental health conditions it's um it's it's very much an anchor for me it very much keeps me around just this, this 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 goal that I have, I I don't particularly enjoy um, life, just in general, is 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 very difficult for me, and uh, having that sort of outside motivation to keep going is is important for me. Um, is there a different response to the documentary from Aspies and Neurotypicals? Well, to be to be honest, um, most of it's been extremely positive. There's been a few comments about, um, the, the only negative comment that I've got is from an autistic person saying that I should delete, um, the, uh, my, my Taekwondo instructor's interview because he says that autism is not a disability per se, um, which I, I, I don't understand, like, I, th I think that's a, a good point, I think. If, if if we're talking about like kind of the the Asperger's Aspie kind of side of things, that's that's a good point. Like, of course, people have um, the 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 recent podcast that I did with Esme Hayes, one of the one of the, one of the autistic interviewees that I had on on the documentary. Um, she talked about the difference between um, autistic traits and autistic impairments. So like the the thing the the co comorbid traits that come along with being autistic that can impair sort of daily functioning and stuff like that, and I thought that was a really important thing to highlight because um, it's always sort of the elephant in the room when we talk about autism awareness and and acceptance. What about those people who who can't communicate and do need twenty four hour care? And I feel like that addition of of the distinguishing autistic impairments is is quite an important thing. Um, and yes, uh, every everyone is going to have different viewpoints, and that's the point of it. That's the you know if if I could get someone who was very harsh and completely getting autism wrong and being a right arsehole about autism, I would include that as well, just to say what an arsehole they are. But it is a university documentary, and I'm supposed to keep it PC and a little bit less inflammatory for that purpose um but maybe in the future maybe we could get some some uh cool toned um children's uh puzzle piece um company on to talk about it now they'd probably sue me to be honest but <laughs> um it's more other people's reactions to aspies that causes problems. Yeah, I think in 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 real life, yeah, in 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 daily life, um, it is very much a social. So it is very much attributed to the social model of disability. I think that's important. Um, 
it is characterized by difficulties. And there's, a, there's actually, I, I did a um, interview, video interview with um, a guy called Guy Shahar from the Transforming Autism Project. And he actually told me about this study that they did about um, three groups of people. It's supposed to show uh, the difficulties in social communication and social cohesion um, that autistic people have. Um, so, so they broke up in three groups, half and half autist, autistic and neurotypical, fully neurotypical and fully autistic. And the neurotypical group, neurotypical group performed really well. They were, they were amazing at the group tasks and they did well. The funny thing is, is that the actual full autistic group, like 100% autistic group performed equally as well on all of the tasks that they were given, which is very, which is very cool. The problem came in when they had 50-50 autistic and neurotypical, so it just sort of like, that they performed a lot worse, and I think that really highlights just the fact that the way that we communicate isn't necessarily bad, and isn't necessarily um, a difficulty and, and an impairment, it's just that we communicate differently. Um, I thought that was an amazing, amazing thing. I'm going to ask him to send me it soon. Um, it's it, it is a brilliant thing to talk about. Um, so, are there any other questions that anybody wants to uh, ask me? I know uh, W Sky has given me a lot of awesome questions, and I'm very appreciative of that. Yeah, you should read it. It's uh, I need to read it as well. It was just a comment. Don't don't quote me on that, but um, I just found that quite interesting. I'll I'll have to ask him. Um, I'll send it to you, um, Vicky, once I uh, once I get it. Um, so what what are the kind of stuff that I've done around around the documentary? So I've got I've got the the website. Um, the Aspergian Society website that I made made myself took a long time. Took about two days of solid work, and um, to sort of iron it out and learn all the ins and outs of website building, um, and that has I think currently about two blog posts on my experience making the documentary and also um, a topic that that es Esme wanted to talk about. Uh, one of the, the autistic interviewees. Um, and she, we, we had a little bit of conversation back and forth on the 40 Oti podcast um, about sort of the media representations of autism. And that, that was a very productive, productive art, article. And I sort of um, line, laid out all of the, the things that I wanted to change in society for it to be better for autistic people. Um, and then I guess you've got the behind the scenes uh, video series that I'm going to be doing. Um, Esme's has already gone out, so it's it's it. What it is is it's basically um, a full in the full interview, rather than the little snippets that you see in the documentary. Just to give you a better background into the the actual views and opinions of and experiences of these autistic people. Um, sadly, if if I was to include all of the interviews, it would be a massive film, and it wouldn't really be a film anyway. Um, and th those are really interesting. I, I only chopped out a few things that they, uh, that Esme didn't want to go public. And it is a nice little video. And I think I've got about f everyone but one person um, has got back to me about um, being on the behind the scenes series um, thingy. Um, the 40 Yards podcast will be going out on Saturday with Esme. Um, it's a very long one. Esme, Esme has a lot of strong and very intricately worded opinions on autism and the media and it's a very interesting interview that I did um, and that yeah that'll go out on Saturday at 12 on the YouTube channel and Spotify and Apple Podcasts so that that could be quite, quite a nice good listen um, I've also got uh, I think James coming on to talk on the the Forty Auto podcast at some point, and there's Adam and Nick who um, may come on to it. 
um, if if they feel feel so so inclined, I suppose. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on around it. I've done a lot of video interviews with the National Autistic Society, which is going on, on Friday. Um, I've done obviously the one with Guy Shahar. Um, there's this big um, BBC producer and, and broadcaster, freelance uh, director called John Offord, who has started his new podcast. Um, and he wanted me to be the uh, the second interviewee on that, and uh, yeah, it's um, it's pretty good. Yo yo yo, what's up, my brother? How you doing? What's up, bro? <laughs> Do you got any questions for me about the Asperger's in the Society documentary? I would love to hear some nice juicy questions that I can sink my brain into. Not my teeth, because that would be that'd be silly, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> just trying to think of some more questions. Let's have a look. Um, we have had quite a few people tuning in and uh, giving some questions. Less so on the the YouTube side of things. Um, it's got some more things here. How does autism occur? That is a good question. Um, autism is uh, it's the the research around autism is a little bit mixed. It's not fully um, appreciated as as it is. Um, so you can you you can say that it's is partially genetic and it's partially environmental and social. Genetic being that. It's likely that if you're autistic that you're going to have relatives or parents or, or siblings that um, have autism or have autistic traits. Um, but it really depends on the environmental and social factors around that person that distinguish whether they have enough traits to be considered to be autistic. It's a very complex way of going about it because it's not like um, a test for, I don't know, um, just trying to think of a like diabetes or something, you can test people for diabetes, um, but you can't test people for autism. You have to look at the traits and, and make a a decision based on those traits, um, whether the person is autistic, and that's not always going to include every single autistic person. Um, and sometimes it's not even needed. Like, you know, sometimes it's not even needed to have that autism diagnosis because there's no need for the level of support that, that the diagnosis would bring. Um, but yeah, it's partially genetic, partially environmental. Um, hi, greetings from Mexico. Thank you for coming in from all the way from Mexico. Greetings from the lovely, uh, lovely uh, North Yorkshire in England. Nice, nice, nice to have you on. Uh, we've got a few more people joining in, um, but currently I'm not sure. So we've got about 15 minutes left of this little uh, Q&A stream. Um, so if there's any questions that you want to ask me about the documentary, um, please do ask. Um, any Anything to do with the documentary. Um, it would be always very appreciative because I've gone through pretty much all of the, the questions that um, that's been sort of pitched to me um, beforehand. Um, so we've got another one here. Um, how do I know if I'm autistic? My mates keep calling me it. Um, I think knowing knowing that you're autistic is is um, a difficult thing. The, the best the best way to know that you're autistic is to firstly read up the sort of baseline medical knowledge of, of autism in terms of the traits seeing whether any of those traits really um, get you on any sort of level and I suppose the next step is is actually going out there and listening to us experiences um, of autistic people on YouTube on Instagram on Facebook, whatever, and anything like that, having um, that idea is 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 very in, 
those sort of mixed um, understandings of autism is a good way of determining whether you are. Um, got another one. Does autism give you a kind of superpower? Oh, um, I think it really depends on the person. Um, <laughs> superpower is, is a very extravagant word. I think there are a lot of traits of being autistic that make us great workers and make us great at what we're interested in. Being that concentration, being that outside the box thinking because there is no box. Um, being uh, just the way that we process and understand our environment and ourselves um, in sort of more of a logical sense and more of a analytical sense, that can be a, a certain superpower. Um, for me, when I was doing my Taekwondo, concentration, liking to stay to a routine was a, was a big part of, of why I got so good at Taekwondo. Um, so I suppose in some ways, yeah, yeah, some ways, a lot of good traits. Other side of that, a lot of bad traits, but you can't have one without the other, or at least most people can't. <laughs> You're from West Yorkshire as well. Hey, another uh, another Yorkie. Another Yorkie bar. Nice to meet you. Thank you for tuning in from West Yorkshire. You don't think it's a superpower. Well, it's not, is it? But that there, there are some benefits and some, some downsides. It's just a little bit... A um, little, little bit sort of difficult to, to know. Depends on the person, really, I guess. Um, you mean, I guess you have people uh, with like savantism who have like amazing mathematical, um, I guess you could say superpowers, uh, but then on the flip side of that, they're they're very, they're, they're not very functional in life, and and they need a lot of support, like a lot. Um, depends on the person still. Do scientists have a rough idea of the environmental factors? Um, we we. The environmental fa factors, I wouldn't say, are completely from, um, you know, like chemicals and stuff. I'm not talking about, the, you know, the age-old uh, stupid myth about vaccines and autism. Um, it's not. It's not about the, those kind of environmental factors. It's more um, to do with, you know, uh, how you're brought up. The, the way that you're taught, the things that you experience. Um, I think because there is such a neurological difference between um, autistic people and non-autistic people, um, a lot of that is going to be com coming from the genetics. Um, there, are, there are some genes that have been highlighted and there's also some differences in, in hormones and hormone receptors. Um, and differences in the, in the sizes and connectivities of, of different parts of the brain for autistic people that aren't really a subject to in, environments, I suppose. Um, but the, there are always, in terms of the traits, there are always those environmental factors that dictate how the person um, behaves in the world, I guess. How long did the documentary take to make it from the concept? Um, so I had the I had the concepts already. I wanted to make something about autism and mental health. I thought, hey, you know what? We're gonna include a main storyline, but we're also gonna go sort of behind the scenes and, and include some, um, <laughs> I guess, some more personal interviews. Um, it, it it really was just a trial and error process. I thought, tell you what, I'm gonna go out there. I'm gonna get some. Um, b-roll that relates to what the uh, script that I'm putting across um, is like. I'm going to try and give a bit of an explanation in, in my own words on, on my own personal videos about uh, what autism is in terms of like the triad of impairments and stuff like that. Um, but a lot of that is bringing, um, bringing it to light in a very slow, constructive and, and um, progressive god I'm using a lot of buzzwords here aren't I I basically just winged it <laughs> winged it with a plan yeah 
Um, was it difficult for you to get a diagnosis? It, it wasn't difficult. I was I was diagnosed when I was ten, um, and uh, it was it wasn't difficult. I, I was definitely autistic, um, and because of them, obviously in the UK, um, I didn't have to pay for it. My parents didn't have to pay for it. We got a few benefits from it, which was which was good because I kind of needed it. Um, and I was yeah, I was ten years old. Was was one of the the highlights of my childhood. I don't really remember much from my childhood, um, but that that was something that really st stands out for me. Um, your mum and dad are autistic too. Well, my mum's definitely not. I would say, I would say that, that there are some aspects to my dad that are typically autistic, and that is not a bash at all, because he's a very, it's it. it He's got every every base of his life covered at the moment. He's, he's into his fitness. He's, he he socialises. He dates. He, he he does all of that that stuff that that is is good for um, I guess a, a man to do, a person to do. Um, but yeah, he does have a lot of traits of autism. But I I'm I'm not too willing to to say that he is because it's. It's not really my place to to do that. I can only suggest and I can only um, sort of inquire about things. Um, but yeah, I'd say it comes more from my dad's side, especially like my granddad. Definitely my granddad. No question about it. <laughs> he doesn't know it. He thinks I'm the, uh, the the disabled little kid in the family, but it comes from him. He's passed it on to me. <laughs> Ooh. Can I ask what made your parents think there was something different? Yeah, I used to... <laughs> I used to bounce about a lot on the trampoline, yeah. Uh, I used to <laughs> bounce my brother by his pants. <laughs> I used to spin around a lot, which used to get on my parents' nerves to, to the end of no belief. Like, it really used to annoy them. I used to, when, when I was a kid, I used to like go like this. And I always used to stand on the edge of um, new places that I was that I was being taken to. Um, <laughs> I was I was very I, I stood back and I and I analysed people before I entered situations. Um, and I and I guess uh, I, was, I was a little bit too sort of black and white and and direct and and stuff. And sometimes situations and transitions got the got the best of me yeah <laughs> uh, right so we are about 54 minutes into the live stream so it's it's gonna be um finishing up soon uh i hope that that everybody is um doing well with the covid situation it's not exactly the most fun situation for us um yeah the the covid i think that's probably a good thing to talk about um it really it was really difficult for me to deal with isolation the first three weeks it was that that documentary sort of pulled me through and uh, gave me something to focus on but it really just wiped out all of the um the things that I would usually do, and that that really destabilised me quite a lot. Even even now, even even now, as an adult and being able to sort of live independently and stuff. Um, yeah, COVID COVID's difficult. Um, it is that there, there is a joke that we have in in the autistic community is like, it's an autistic world now. There's no social interaction. Everybody moves out of the way of you. Um, <laughs> We had no physical contact. Uh, stay two meters away from me. Um, it's just, uh, that's that's sort of a, a meme that's going around in the autistic community, which I think is quite funny. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the the realness of it is that I, I am quite a social person, and I like to see my friends, and it's it's quite hard for me to go out and and see see my fr friends in this situation, <laughs> and it's quite lonely. Um, as well, um, 
it's nice that you know I've got my family around and and, and stuff and and I've, I've got some good contact with my friends and stuff and I video chat with my friends now and again um, but it can be quite hard yeah it is it is hard love you too bro thanks for coming on to support me and Julia thank you very much I appreciate it um, so we've got some new people have joined. Hello Beth and hello Auto Evie. Uh, we do have only four minutes left. Um, so if there's anything that you want to ask me about the documentary, you got to get it out soon because it's going to be over soon. Um, <laughs> if there is any any um, uh, questions that you want to ask, please ask me because. There, there may be an opportunity in the future to do another sort of catch-up live stream about it. And, you know, if, if it does kick off and we do get um, interviews on mainstream um, media sites, then maybe maybe it might be uh, worth having another live stream about all the stuff that's been happening. Um, but we, we don't know until it comes along, so this could be the, the one and only live stream. And you've only got three minutes. Three minutes on the watch. Where can you watch it? Asperger's Grove YouTube channel and on the www.aspergersonsociety.com There you go. <laughs> so about that bouncing on the trampoline. <laughs> bouncing my brother by his pants on the trampoline. So I was a, a naughty boy. Probably gave him some, some ir 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 movable scars from uh... <laughs> I apologize I'm sorry I'm sorry I thought you I thought you were enjoying it <laughs> you have a scar oh god I'm sorry Oh, it's taken a, t a turn for the wrong. <laughs> um, right, so any more questions? We've got two minutes left. Quick fire round, get some questions out. Uh, we're going to talk about the dock. Can I drive? Yes, I've got a license, but I hate driving. I hate driving. It's, I don't, just don't find it pleasurable. I like being in the car, but... No. Um, no worries. I, I'm glad that glad that everybody's uh, come on to support me, and uh, it's it's nice to to have a platform to to talk about um, the documentary. Cause, you know, I've been so uh, behind the scenes, um, behind the uh, computer for so long that. I haven't really had a chance to interact with you guys, and I think it's nice that that we've all um, that nice that so many of you have come on to um, watch this and sort of tuned in and out and, and asked some questions and stuff. So I'm, I'm very appreciative of it. Um, I'm gonna have to round it up now though. But if there's any questions that you want to ask, um, you can send them to my DM, and I possibly could do it in the future. Um, you, if you haven't already checked it out, there's my YouTube channel, Asperger's Growth, Mental Health and Autism Videos, 40 Arty Podcast, which is available for free on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. There's about 13 episodes in total um, as of this Saturday, and there's lots of lots of more videos of on the um, AspergersInSociety.com website that you can check out. But anyways, thank you very much, and... Thank you very much for tuning in. See you later.